joining today with Marilyn and Sarah. We're delighted to have you with us. And I was praying about our time together and I love this verse. God dropped it in my heart for you today. It's Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the thoughts and plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, give you hope and a future. You may be watching today saying, I don't feel very hopeful. You may feel hopeless. <laughs> you may feel like you have no future, no vision. God wants to fill you with future and vision. Hop on the phone, get on the website. We would love to pray for you and see God do absolutely amazing things in your life for hope and a future because he's got great plans for you. And mom, I'm so excited. We have an awesome day in front of us today. Yes, we do. And I have a word that yep. I want to share before I introduce one of the best guests we've ever had. Mm -hmm. So the word I have is I want to thank all of you wonderful partners. Sarah and I could not affect the whole world without you. And so the blessings of seeing people saved and healed and spirit filled and delivered, that's a part of your blessing. But today God just dropped it in my heart that there are 30 people in Atlanta that God is calling to be partners to MHM, to Marilyn Hickey Ministries. So I want you to call in. You say, hmm, that's me. So call in, don't put it off. And this guest, oh, Laura Harris-Smith, <laughs> I love your book. I'm so glad. Seeing the you. Voice that of God. When I started this, I couldn't put it down. Good. And I kind of pushed <laughs> aside some other things I needed Aww. to do. And I especially love chapter four because <laughs> I think I've ignored my dreams. Mm -hmm. You know, Many people do. And God was trying to mm -hmm. talk to me and mm -hmm. maybe emphasize special things. Mm -hmm. So share with us <laughs> how God gave you this book and how everyone needs wow. this book. Don't waste your dreams. <laughs> well, it is true. Um, we all dream. I have many people who say to me, I don't dream. Um, many people believe that. But as I began to write this book, I thought I have got to bring some sleep study doctors into this and get some information. Scientists don't really understand why we sleep, much less why we dream, you know. So I knew I needed to pick their brains as well as bring a biblical perspective. And I tell you what, when I realized that nighttime is a sacred time and that it wasn't some afterthought, God didn't create the moon and stars as some, oh yeah, you know, it was a, an ordained time so that man could be still and God could have his ear. Um, and it's why the enemy is after that time as well. He will try to, through insomnia and apneas and stress, he will try to rob our sleep. So these people that say to me, I don't, I don't dream. I say, listen, here's what I know now. We dream each night between four and six dream REM cycles, rapid eye movement cycles. And in each one of those, between four and six dreams. So you're having each night between 16 and 36 dreams. It's scientifically proven. So the question is, wow. Why am I not dreaming? It's why am I not remembering my dreams? And that's why I spent a great deal of time in the book in chapter five, going into uh, nutrition, the vitamins we need to take for better dream recall. God gave it all to us on the third day of creation. You know, the things that we can take to make our bodies more healthy and remember our dreams, take back our dreams really is what it is. You know, mom, we have people watching today yeah. that struggle with sleep. Mm -hmm. I know that beyond the shadow of a doubt. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage you to hop on the phone, get on the website, grab your copy of this because you're listening and I know many of you, you have <laughs> sleep apnea or you have a friend mm -hmm. or your husband, your wife has sleep apnea. Oh my goodness, hop on the phone, grab this book. It'll be a huge, huge resource to you just for that one component mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. But the other part of it too is that whole dream thing, right? Because <laughs> the dream deal, some people, yeah. you know, that's a tricky part. Mm -hmm. I mean, really mm -hmm. tricky, because you're right. We think we don't dream or we don't remember them. And don't you think that the enemy has tried to come in and through counterfeits really, really piggyback this beautiful thing that God has given us to speak to us in the night? He, the enemy has tried to come in with nightmares. Um, he has tried to, just even in the, if I can say new agey way that, that the secular world interprets dreams, um, he's tried to just, you know, wreck that communication with the Lord. I was on a, um, a website one time, a secular website. I was curious what it said about some dream interpretations. And there was, the, it said something like, um, if you're a woman and you dream of biscuits, you're too ambitious in your career. What? And I thought, what does that have to do with any, <laughs> like, you know, surely we can it's do better nuts. than that. And so I asked the publisher when I wrote Seeing the Voice of God, may I put a dream dictionary in it with symbols 
that people can wake up and say, oh, and this is where this is in scripture. Or if it's not in scripture, you know, there are some symbols that are not there, like let's say a rear view mirror. Um, it's not in scripture, but I have, you know, the verse from Philippians in here next to that symbol, forgetting that which lies behind and reaching forward for that which is ahead, because that's what a, a rear view mirror, you know, would represent in, in a dream. And so I just got excited about the dream dictionary. The publisher said yes. And I was telling you earlier uh, before the show that I asked them if I could do a thousand symbols. And they said, are you sure you want to bite that off? And I was like, yeah, it'll be awesome. And about 500 symbols into it, <laughs> I, I literally, I, it's hard writing a dictionary. I sure. thought I'm going to lose my mind. But I tell you what, it has proven to be the thing that has borne the most lasting fruit um, from the book. And I have people all the time tell me, I keep it right there on my bed stand, by my bedside between my Bible and my journal. I mean, that's, that's, that's weighty. That, that really blesses me. And are so. you missing the voice of God? <laughs> because you're not seeing the dream on how spiritually God wants to talk to us. Yeah. You must get the book. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't put it off. And what I did is I underlined certain parts because I thought I need to remember this, <laughs> I need to go over it, because I've kind of just ignored my dreams. You know, and some of them I can see now there's a sequence of mm -hmm. God trying to talk mm -hmm. to me. And I would say to you, I wouldn't get one book, I'd mm -hmm. get two. <laughs> you know, we like to give gifts. You like to give gifts. And when you can give someone this, even an unsaved person yeah. would enjoy mm -hmm. this. So it's a good way that you can pass something on that's a missionary and it'll work while you sleep. <laughs> Call now. And you know, I like, I mean, chapter seven is your dream dictionary mm -hmm. and the symbols. Because mm -hmm. here's the thing. So many times, and you've referred to this, you, we dismiss them because of pizza yeah. dreams. Yeah. That's what we call them, pizza dreams. <laughs> but in here, I mean, those, the, that yeah. whole deal of symbols is a big deal. Well, what if Ezekiel had dismissed everything right. as a pizza dream? I don't think there was pizza at the time, but you know, there, you, you look at, <laughs> right, right. What if it was a hummus dream? You look at how the enemy has come against this subject and it's because it frightens him. So dreams are not a trendy topic. We all are going to sleep. You know, we should be. Uh, we are always going to dream. And so, yes, it has awakened something in people, even in the lost. I wrote it with a voice uh, that was really non-religious. It's full of Jesus, make no mistake. I have several invitations in here for people to come right. to the Lord because I knew it was going to attract the lost. Yeah. And it has because they dream, they sleep. They want to know and be known. And I like this too. She tells you how to get sleep. Mm -hmm. Because, you yes. know, as you said, people are suffering from not sleeping mm -hmm. and sleep is so yes. very important yes. and this will help you. Mm -hmm. It'll even help you to know what to eat, yeah. to help your dreams be real to you. Mm -hmm. I think that is awesome. <laughs> and you say, well, are dreams in the Bible? What about Nebuchadnezzar? Oh, yeah. <laughs> dreams yeah. God often gives to unsaved people mm -hmm. to get them to know Him. They won't listen in the daytime, mm -hmm. so He gets them at night. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we won't listen in the daytime. So he yeah. gets us at night. So you say, wow, is all this biblical, not crazy? Not crazy, but mm -hmm. very necessary mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. Very necessary. So don't put it off, get the book. So when you write in here, another thing you do in the first couple chapters is you talk about different kinds of yes. dreams. I was hoping we could go there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I discuss the 10 types of dreams that I see in the mm -hmm. Bible and I break them down to uh, the five dreams that are for now and five type of dreams that are for later that you have to sit on and stew about, you know, and pray about. Um, and so I discuss, just for example, I discuss waking dreams. Have you ever had that dream that, I mean, literally, it, you, it wakes you up in the morning and it nags you all day long. It's the one that you just feel like you're supposed to do something with it. Um, and you should, it's a prayer assignment. And a lot of times with me, the Lord will, he'll just save my neck. You know, he'll just say, I've had dreams, anything from there's danger coming for this person or this child. You know, I have six children. So that's a lot of dreams, a lot of interventions. The Lord will give me, um, you know, insight on how I should handle this or that. But also just, I remember one time the Lord just gave me a dream that someone was going to be unkind to me that day. And, uh, and he knows I need a running start, you know, I, I, he does. And so 
just little, little and big things. The Lord wants to live life with us. And another type of those dreams would be your uh, warning dreams. And so I've had, I tell you, those in, in combination, a warning waking dream is definitely an assignment. Uh, and it usually means you have a small window of time to partner with God and change uh, whatever the enemy schemes are. And a lot of people mistake warning dreams for nightmares. Hmm. Uh, but it's just information that the Lord has given you. It's not something set in stone, bad that's going to happen to somebody. It's the Lord saying, pray, partner with me and change history. And Laura, I've had an experience with that a long time ago when we started our church. My mother had a dream. We were having an evangelist come and in wow. the dream there was a lot of confusion. Hmm. So we met at the church and of course we just had a small church, but we met ahead of time and prayed that wow. the enemy could not do that. Well, that wow. night some crazy people came in to absolutely upset wow. the service. Well, Very we had already mm -hmm. dealt with it. Mm -hmm. We already knew, mm -hmm. but I just wish I had listened more. <laughs> I'd, I wish I'd read that book way back then. That's why wow. I want you to get the book mm -hmm. because I think, God, in a way I've wasted a lot of dreams mm -hmm. that you wanted to talk to me. I love the word dreams from God will always be scriptural. Mm -hmm. They will always be the power of the Holy Spirit. And so, you know, we discern what God wants to say to us. I love what God is going to do in you. And you know, I just really challenge and encourage you, hop on the phone, get on the website, grab a couple copies. This would be a great resource for a book club, for a Bible study mm -hmm. group, mm -hmm. for a Sunday school class, a church, huge, huge. And here's the thing, sleep, we oftentimes we dismiss it. We ignore it, no big deal, you know, everybody sleeps or they don't or whatever. But this is a really <laughs> big topic. And yeah. if we think about it, a third of our life is spent sleeping. What a great opportunity for God to speak to us when we're quiet and still. We rely on communication through images on our phones, internet, and television. But our Creator wants to communicate with us visually as well. Did you know that by age 75, you will have slept for 25 years and had almost 1 million dreams? It's scientifically proven that everybody dreams and biblically proven that God speaks through dreams. For your gift of $25 or more, we will send you Seeing the Voice of God by dream expert Laura Harris-Smith. This informative book will help you study and interpret dreams as well as guide you with nutritional advice that will help you take back your dreams for better dream recall. We will send you this book along with Marilyn's two CD teaching set, Dreams and Visions. Through Marilyn's anointed teaching, discover scriptural ways to check the validity of dreams and visions and learn what the Bible says about them. We will also include our Spiritual Life Confessions card for easy reference to the promises God has for you. See what you might be missing while you sleep and see the voice of God. Call or click today. so excited to have you watching with us today on with Marilyn and Sarah but we have our wonderful guest Laura Harris Smith thank you thank you thank you thank you love having you <laughs> love, love being here Laura we were talking just about um, warning dreams mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and that's kind of weird because mm -hmm. you know you get what that can be a little bit spooky and kind of freaky be. too so what does that mm -hmm. mean and many people as I said before can have what they think is a nightmare someone, uh, maybe is a loved one's going to be harmed or they see just information. I say that's like wartime intelligence. Uh, like with Elisha, when, you know, they were coming up over the mountain and um, I, I think of how the king said, how is it that everywhere our army goes, Israel already knows where we're going to be? And they said, well, they have this prophet 
and he, the Lord shows him things, you know, and so it's the same with us. God will show you things that will better your life, protect you, bring him glory. So warning dreams fall into that. And if I can just give you an example, and this actually combines warning and waking dreams. Um, one Sunday morning, I woke up and uh, we pastor a church in Nashville called Eastgate Creative Christian Fellowship. Okay, so I wake up and, or I should say, I am about to wake up. I have this dream that I'm standing in front of the church and a wrecking ball comes towards me. Um, it's coming for the church, but I'm standing in between it and the church. So God will also allow strong emotions in dreams like that to, you know, compel you to take action. So I knew, uh, then I woke up and I knew that the enemy was coming against the church somehow to wreck it, you know, to do severe damage. That's demolition. So I got up, I knew there was pre-service prayer going on. I got, you know, dressed and got there early. I gathered every elder, pastor, intercessor I could and brought them in the room and said, listen, this is what's, this is what's up the enemy's sleep. We need to stop it. And so we prayed and sure enough that week we had two families, very key families in our church that a feud arose between their children, you know, parents and their Ooh, children, you're going to side with bad. your kid. And so, oh, it was, it was so dangerous because would, if either of them had left, a good portion of the church would have wanted to follow them. But you know what? God had gotten there first. Because of that dream, we were already in prayer. We actually cleared our schedules and we had plenty of time for mediation meetings that weekend or that whole week. And God worked it out and they both stayed. And that is just one example of how God will completely thwart the plans of the enemy if you'll apply faith to it. It's like anything else. And this is in the book. You yeah. tell about this yes. in the book. And it makes me think of a time when Sarah was going through a great challenge in Germany and I was in Japan speaking at a conference and I had this horrible dream that she was attacked mm -hmm. and she was being attacked with by the enemy. And I remember getting out of bed and praying in the spirit because I had no peace and just mm -hmm. praying in the spirit, praying in the spirit. So I love this, that God mm -hmm. wants to alert you yes. so that mm -hmm. you can pray in his name. You say, <laughs> well, I don't know how to be alert. I don't know what to do. That's yeah. why you got to get the book. <laughs> And I, again, get mm -hmm. 10 or 12. Mm -hmm. Take one for everyone in your Bible study, mm -hmm. everyone in your Sunday school. And you've got friends and you've got unsaved friends who need this desperately. Mm -hmm. Don't you agree? Totally agree. The other part of it that I love is that I'm always this, I'm this high grade junkie on God's voice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to hear God. I <laughs> want too. God to talk to me. Mm -hmm. I want to listen. Mm -hmm. And what I read in this book, and I love this, mm -hmm. is that there's this whole sleep opportunity. Yeah, yeah, and mm -hmm. you speak to that, that mm -hmm. God speaks to us. Mm -hmm. So yeah. talk us through that a little bit. Well, that really is my heartbeat, is to hear the voice of the wow. Father. Imagine life, if you heard His voice perfectly and clearly, you would never make a bad decision. You would never choose a bad relationship. You would probably be wealthy because you'd make all the right financial decisions and choices. Um, and so that is really my heart, is to teach people intimate communication with the Lord. That's why I say that this book is not really a book on prophecy. Obviously it is, and I discuss that in length. Uh, but it's just a book about communication with God. Either we're in relationship with Him or we're not. And when He gives me those warning dreams and He yeah. requires me to get up in the night, yeah. I'm not afraid anymore. It makes me weak in the knees how much He loves me mm -hmm. and wants to protect me and better my life. Right. It doesn't, right. So, it doesn't make you afraid. Because mm -mm. here's the thing. Mm -mm. There are people in our audience, they're afraid. Yeah, yeah they and are. And those dreams, mm -hmm. I mean, they quiver their liver. Yes. What do you say to yeah. that? I'd like to speak directly to them. There are people who, um, they are so afraid of, of their dreams that when they have them, they oftentimes are crippled uh, the next day with fear or they'll avoid, you know, people or they'll just start arranging the events of their life uh, to avoid danger. When that is such a time waster, if you would just apply faith to it and say, God, you have shown me, you have shown me this thing and I am going to, with you ordering my steps, uh, pray about this, pray for this person and there is not going to be any danger. I w if I had a dollar for every warning dream I had that I applied faith to and I saw the situation change entirely, I would be a wealthy woman. And you know what? I am a wealthy woman in the spirit because uh, the Lord, 
He just loves us. This is all about relationship with the Lord. And you tell people mm -hmm. how to take authority yes. over the enemy. Yes. Not just, oh my goodness, I had this dream, this mm -hmm. is going to happen. Mm -hmm. But how do you take mm -hmm. authority as yeah. a believer? There's a way to take authority. Yeah. And we don't have time to tell you all of those things. That's why you need to get the book. <laughs> Take the authority that Jesus gives you mm -hmm. in His name and know the scriptures that you speak to the enemy. So good. You know, let me ask this too. How do you coach your kids on this stuff? Ooh, breakfast at our house is fun because we sit around the table and someone has always had a dream. Uh, and I love, and I even love that my adult children who are married, them contacting me and saying, Mom, what does my dream mean? I love interpreting dreams because I feel like I'm just bridging, you know, a gap, helping someone understand what God is saying. So they love it. I have a house full of dreamers. I really do. And, um, and not all of them would say that they have the gift of prophecy, but they just love the Lord. And, and can I please just add that it's not just the 10 types of dreams in, uh, include more than just crisis intervention. There's encouraging dreams. Yes. You know, I remember one time I was really, really sick and I had a dream that David uh, visited me in the, in the hospital and I knew it was him because it was exactly as the Bible described him with his red, you know, his ruddy skin and hair. And he just leaned down over me and he said, I am so proud of you. He was a warrior. This is what I took from it. He was a warrior and he was a worshiper. Mm -hmm. David was saying to me, I see you doing both of those. You're warring and you're praising God through this and God is proud of you. Uh, and so uh, listen, there's plenty of opportunity too for the Lord to just encourage you in the middle of the night. It's good, it's good. And I remember one time I had a dream and I'm holding up the book because I want you, you to see this before your eyes. And I didn't know much about dreams, but I was very, very sick. And you know, it looked like I could never travel again. Mm -hmm. They were saying that to me. And in this dream, I'm in, I knew I was in Europe and I'm walking up a hill and the light is coming up. And I said, wow, I'm well, look, I'm strong, I'm healthy. And so the next morning I woke up and thought that was only a dream, but it <laughs> sustained me. Mm -hmm. And then later Sarah and I had a meeting in Naples and one of the streets we were driving up was the street in my dream. Oh, oh I love See, it. See, that's what I'm <laughs> saying to and you. that's so faith building. Yeah, mm -hmm. you got to get the book mm -hmm. because I look back and think, oh my goodness, I could have been mm -hmm. interpreting a lot mm -hmm. more dreams by listening to the Holy Spirit and knowing the word. So. Have you called yet? Don't put it off. Some of you, you put off things and later you think, oh, I wish I had this book. I was given this book maybe two years ago to read mm -hmm. and I didn't read it because I have stacks of books <laughs> given to me. And then now you're mm -hmm. coming to us mm -hmm. and I'm reading the book. I think, wake up, Marilyn, well. get it. You should have <laughs> been reading that book two years ago. You know, and um, I love that God speaks in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. um, just us making, the connection that God is speaking and God mm -hmm. is speaking in dreams mm -hmm. and that we don't just ignore and mm -hmm. dismiss that. Mm -hmm. We don't just yeah. kind of blow that off. And this book puts an exclamation point mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. But not only exclamation point to get our attention, yeah. but I love the mechanics. Because mm. if you don't tell me how to do I'm it. I'm a practical gal. Ugh, <laughs> thank you, Jesus, right? Because otherwise we're lost. Yeah, I mean, right, don't just yeah. get me all fired up. Give right. me some mechanics. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for writing this book. Also, I want to encourage you to get the book. You need to hop on the website, call now, grab at least three copies. Five copies would be fantastic for all of your friends. This is a great birthday present, Christmas presents, super awesome for your kids, and very, very helpful for all of us to know how to hear God's voice, not only in the daytime when there's lots of distractions, but at nighttime when we sleep. We rely on communication through images on our phones, internet, and television. But our Creator wants to communicate with us visually as well. Did you know that by age 75, you will have slept for 25 years and had almost 1 million dreams? It's scientifically proven that everybody dreams and biblically proven that God speaks through dreams. For your gift of $25 or more, we will send you Seeing the Voice of God by dream expert Laura Harris-Smith. This informative book will help you study and interpret dreams 
as well as guide you with nutritional advice that will help you take back your dreams or better dream recall. We will send you this book along with Marilyn's two CD teaching set, Dreams and Visions. Through Marilyn's anointed teaching, discover scriptural ways to check the validity of dreams and visions and learn what the Bible says about them. We will also include our Spiritual Life Confessions card for easy reference to the promises God has for you. See what you might be missing while you sleep and see the voice of God. Call or click today. so happy to have Laura Smith was oh my goodness love your book <laughs> seeing the voice of God thank mm -hmm. you thank you thank you and Laura thank you. we'd like to ask you to pray for our audience I would um, love to I know there's some people too that have questions about dreams and mm -hmm. stuff so can mm -hmm. you just talk oh. to us a little bit and talk to the audience I would love to I want to pray first for your sweet sleep because sleep is a sacred time and I felt like the Lord said there were some of you out there who the enemy has really tried to invade your sleep so let's pray about that first I just declare over you, my friend, that the Lord is positioning angels around your bed, that He is going to see to it that you have a good night's rest. And I, I challenge you to pray before you go to bed and to say, devil, this is God's time. This is a sacred time. And just commit your, your heart to the Lord. As it says in the Song of Solomon, um, I am asleep, but my heart is awake listening for the voice of my beloved. So I release just dreams over you. Um, and I, I pray that you would recall your dreams and that you would get healthy so that you could recall your dreams. And I want to urge you, I like it when my readers stay in touch with me. And so I invite you to do that. You can go to my website at www.lauraharrissmith.com, lauraharrissmith.com. And I'd love to hear from you. Thank you. So awesome and love the mm -hmm. book. Love how God is talking to people and connecting mm -hmm. people to himself through mm -hmm. the book. So thanks for being willing because <laughs> not everybody wants to write, you know, mm. a book about dreams and right. sleep. So mm -hmm. thank you for being willing, for being obedient and letting God speak through you mm -hmm. to connect people to God's heart mm -hmm. out of love, genuine mm -hmm. flat out love. So thank you. We appreciate thank you. you. You two ladies appreciate are you awesome. Being it's with been a us. pleasure. <laughs> Make sure you hop on the phone. If you need prayer for anything, we obviously want to pray for you. Of course, grab your book. It'll be a huge, huge resource and benefit blessing in your life. Thank you for watching our YouTube channel. We're so thrilled that we get to minister to you on YouTube. So of course, you gotta hit the subscribe button because we wanna continue to get to connect and at your convenience. That's one of the things I love about YouTube is you can watch at your own convenience and when you subscribe, then you get all the latest and the greatest.